Hello, hello, hello. Today is November 15, 2021. That's what it is for me. Maybe not for you, depending upon where you live. This video is only for physics lovers. And if you have not watched the solutions to problem 123, don't even bother. <laughs> no, there is no use for you then to watch this video. In problem 123, I shine sunlight onto a mirror. And I make the assumption that it is an ideal mirror and that it reflects all the incoming light. Light has momentum, so there is a momentum transfer to the mirror. I discussed that in the solutions. As a result of that, there will be a force pushing onto the mirror and the mirror will start to move with a constant acceleration. And I calculate that acceleration because we know the force. The force is the derivative of the momentum change. We know the mass of the mirror, so we calculate the acceleration. And we know that the acceleration lasts for 30 seconds, so the speed of the mirror after the 30 seconds will be 8 times t, which is 30 times the acceleration, and we find 2 times 10 to the minus 7 meters per second. The mirror is somewhere in the ISS, International Space Station. At first it was zero speed in the station, and now, after 30 seconds, it has a speed of 2 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. So far, so good. So then I said, well, since energy is conserved, the only way that this can happen is that the light that was reflected, going back to me, must have lost energy. How much energy? Well, you can calculate the kinetic energy of that mirror. Because you know its speed and you know its mass, one half mv squared. That turned out to be 2 times 10 to the minus 15 joules. So I argued that the reflected light coming back to me must also have lost 2 times 10 to the minus 15 joules. Otherwise, energy would not be conserved. I then showed you that if I use the speed of 2 times 10 to the minus 7 meters per second and I apply relativistic Doppler shift corrections, then I showed you that the light that returns has a lower frequency and the factor by which it is lower was 1 plus beta. And beta is the velocity of the mirror divided by c. And I chose for that velocity the highest velocity after 30 seconds, 2 times 10 to the minus 7 meters per second. And lo and behold, if I use then the relativistic Doppler shift, I demonstrate it that the loss of energy when it comes back to me is also 2 times 10 to the minus 15 joules. And all of you were happy. Except one student, one viewer said, I don't understand this. Because the mirror first started with speed zero. 
and then the speed gradually builds up linearly in time until it reaches 2 times 10 to the minus 7 meters per second. But if now you want to use the effect of relativistic Doppler shift, in this case we call it redshift, you cannot use the speed at its highest value because the speed linearly increases. A t, remember, t is the time. So you really should not have used 2 times 10 to the minus 7 meters per second, but you should have used half that, which would have been the mean value between 0 and 2 times 10 to the minus 7. But when you use half the speed, which you should have done, the energy loss in the photons in the returning light would not have been 2 times 10 to the minus 15 joules. It would have been half that. Can you please explain why you used the maximum speed and not the mean speed? That's what he asked me. Of course, I knew very well that I should have chosen the mean value of beta, which means half the maximum. Of course I knew that. But I remembered my problem in my seventh assignment of 803. I remembered problem five. Police people who observe with radar the speed of cars approaching them and going away from them. And because I remembered that result, I did not use half the speed of the mirror, the maximum speed of the mirror, but I used the full maximum speed of the mirror because I doubled it. I doubled the speed, the mean speed, so that I could use the maximum. Why did I double the speed? <laughs> yeah, it was my shortcut to success. I will now cover with you my problem five of my seventh assignment of 803, and then you will understand why I used the shortcut and used the maximum speed of the mirror and not the mean speed of the mirror, which would be half. Are you ready? I am ready. Before we continue with problem 5 of assignment 7 of 803, here is the name of the only person who pointed out to me that I really should have used the mean value of beta and not the beta of the maximum, which would have been twice higher. And he wanted an explanation. So this is his name, OLDTVN nut. Well, he certainly is not a nut, I can assure you that. If he hadn't asked me, I would have been happy because I knew what I was doing when I used the maximum value of the speed, so the highest value for beta, I knew that. Uh, I regret in retrospect that I really skipped the step why I chose a value for beta which was twice as high as the mean value. That's really the purpose of this video. Problem number five, assignment 7803. Here's a police car. Police car is not moving, it's standing still. It sends radar to a car. The frequency of the radar is F0. The car has a more or less constant speed V. 
Our mirror does not have a constant speed, but the car has a approximately constant speed v. So beta of the car is v over c. Now, the car is approaching. That means we get blue shift. When this radiation hits the car, the car is already approaching that radiation. That means already there is a relativistic Doppler shift. And so the frequency that the car receives is already higher by a factor 1 plus beta. Frequency increases, right, because they are approaching. So F prime, what is received by the car is 1 plus beta times F0, and beta is the speed of the car divided by C. Now the car reflects this incoming radar. And so when it reflects, since it is moving, you have to again apply the relativistic Doppler shift for the fact that it is moving while it is reflecting, radiating that light. Therefore, the radar that actually leaves the car after reflection, which arrives at the police, is then F double prime, which is 1 plus beta times F prime. Twice the Doppler shift. 1 plus beta times F prime is also 1 plus beta square times F0. And 1 plus beta square for very small values of beta is also 1 plus 2 beta. So, in the case of this police measuring your speed, approaching you, this is the correct equation. The frequency that they receive, the police, is 1 plus 2 beta of the car times F0. Now, admittedly, in my case of the mirror, the mirror was not approaching, but the mirror was receding. The only difference is that the plus signs here then becomes minus signs, and you get redshift instead of blue shift. That's really an unimportant detail. But what is not an un so the receding part means then that in these equations you get a minus sign. So it is true what old TV not told me that the mean speed of the mirror is really 10 to the minus 7 meters per second and not twice that. So the beta average is really 10 to the minus 7 divided by C. However, I knew from this example that I have to multiply that by 2. I have to double the beta. In the case of the car, the beta was more or less constant. In the case of the mirror, the beta is not constant. It goes from 0 to a maximum value. And the mean value is half of the maximum. But I have to take twice that mean value. Therefore, I have twice of the mean value of beta, and then I do get the result that the light that is reflected has an energy of two times, to the, two times 10 to the minus 15 joules. The same, it's the loss 2 times 10 to the minus 15 joules because the mirror increases its energy, kinetic energy, by 2 times 10 to the minus 15. So, my solution was perfect, but I should not have taken the shortcut the way I did. Surprisingly, no one caught it except, except old TV 
Not, not. <laughs> yes, this is not so easy physics. This is not the easiest part of physics and way outside the level of uh, JEE advanced, of course, and way outside the level of high school students. That's, that's not even an issue. What is an issue? And what is always an issue? We will be friends, no matter what. <laughs>